All right, hello everybody, and uh, hope everyone's having a great day today. This is our second video of lesson 3.1, and today we're going to be looking at writing expressions. So if we look at our I can statement, it says, I can write and simplify expressions that fit a real world scenario. Okay, and so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be writing expressions, we're going to review the nature of expressions, we're going to discuss some strategies for word problems, and then we are going to do some example problems, of course, as well. So here's a solid understanding of the term expression, because I want everyone to know what that exactly means. Okay, an expression is one way of representing a value. Okay, the big key thing here is an expression does not have an equal sign. There is no equal sign for an expression. Okay, expressions also may contain variables that represent unknown numbers. So what I have down here is I have a couple examples of expressions. 2 plus 3 is an expression of 5. This is an expression of 5. Notice that there's no equal sign, okay? But it is expressing something that does equal 5, okay? It does represent a value. 2 plus a is an expression that represents infinite possibilities, infinite possibilities as a could equal anything. So that's an expression that may contain a variable, that contains a variable and represents unknown numbers because we don't know what 2 plus a is. Because if a could be a billion, so then 2 plus a would be a billion and 2. Or a could be just 1, and then 2 plus a would be 3. We don't know what a is. So this would be an ex this is an expression that rep represents infinite amount, an infinite amount of solutions. Okay? So when we look at word problems, here's the strategies that, here's are probably the, these are the best strategies to tackle word, word problems. Number one, relax, okay? Just relax and just read it, okay? Word problems are not nearly as hard as we make them out to be. We relax, read it, and follow these steps. We should do okay, okay? Number two, circle any words you don't understand, okay? So whenever I'm reading a word problem, I always go over and just start circling whatever I don't know, okay? Because that means I know for step three, I can use the internet, I can use a dictionary, friends, I can ask the teacher to help me understand the circled words, Okay, because if we don't understand what everything means, then we're not going to fully understand how to tackle that problem. Number four, try to focus on the actual question. There's some word problems are what three, four sentences long, but there's only one small piece that actually tells you what you're trying to find. So we have to recognize what the actual question is and figure out what exactly it is that we are supposed to do for this problem. Okay, this is a this is another key key step. Okay, number five. Underline every number or keyword you will need to answer the question. Underline the values that you need. Okay, if it, Underline the specific numbers that you're going to use in your problem, in your expression, in your equation. Underline everything you need to know. Okay, And then number six, begin solving and don't ever give up. So important to never, ever give up. I, I can't tell you how many times I see people just look at a word problem and say they don't get it and they give up but they don't even try. You'll never get anywhere doing that, okay? So just keep going. That's what the, the beauty of word problems is, that sometimes you might not get it right the first time, but then you'll learn from those mistakes, and then you'll be able to move on and get it right the next time, okay? So here's a word problem right here. Let's, let's use the strategies. Let's relax. Let's read it, and let's start circling words we don't know and underlining values that we uh, think we need. So Jill and Kelly work as consultants, okay? So I'm going to pretend like I don't know what consultants is. So I'm going to circle that. Okay, and get paid per project. Jill is paid a project fee of $25. So a project fee of $25, that seems like pretty important information, plus $10 per hour. That also, I know that's gonna be important information. Kelly is paid a project fee of $18 plus $14 per hour. Okay, so that's pretty important information. Write an expression to represent how much a company will pay to hire both consultants for the project. So there's my actual question. So here's my question right here. Okay. Well, it's actually not a question. It's more directions of what I need to do. But this is what I need to actually do. I need to write an expression to represent how much the company will pay to hire both, keyword here, both consultants for a project. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what consultants means. So I'm going to look it up in a dictionary real quick, okay? And consultants, it means um, 
it basically means someone that gives advice about something. So companies will hire consultants to give them advice about money, give them advice about a certain project, things along those lines. Okay, So that's what a consultant is. So now we know what that is, we can go ahead and solve our problem. So I want to write an expression to represent how much a company will pay to hire both consultants for a project. So well, let's look at Jill first. Okay, Jill gets paid, she's the first consultant, her fee is $25, so right away the company is spending $25, plus, here, let's make that, $25, plus $10 per hour. So $10 per hour. So $10 per hour. Okay, I'm going to use H to represent my hours. So that's what Jill does right there. Now, because we have to, because we're hiring both consultants and the question tells me to write an expression to represent both consultants, I got to figure out what Kelly does. Kelly makes 18 18 dollars up front plus 14 dollars per hour. So that would be 14 dollars per hour. There's my H. Okay, so I have Jill in my parentheses here. That's how much she makes, and this is how much Kelly makes. Okay, so I'm gonna put them both in parentheses, and now I know I can just add those two expressions together, and that's what's gonna that's what's gonna tell me how much how much it's gonna cost. Okay, so one thing we want to do, and I want you guys to do when we are working on these problems, I want you to tell me what the variables mean. Okay, so this H right here, what does that mean? So we can just put H equals number of hours worked. Okay, because that's what H represents. We, if, if we don't say what H represents, then it looks like just a letter, a meaningless letter that has no purpose. So we want to explain what our variables mean. And then finally now, we can actually simplify this expression. So this is a review of Lesson 3.1a, the previous video, of simplifying expressions. So first thing I need to do is get rid of these parentheses right here. Okay, But if we notice, I can distribute, but there's nothing to distribute. There's just an imaginary one up in front of both of these. Okay, So really, I can just actually erase those parentheses. I can act like they're not there anymore. So let's go ahead and erase those real quick. huh? Don't need them. I do need that plus sign though, so I'll put that back. Don't need the parentheses because there's nothing in front. There's a plus sign in between. So we're actually, uh, we're good. So now what I need to do is I need to go over, I need to combine my like terms. My like terms are the ones with the variables and the ones without the variables. So 14H and 10H are like terms. So 10H plus 14H, that equals 24H. Okay, and then $25 plus $18, that's going to equal, here, let's see, let's make sure we work this out so we don't make any mistakes, don't want to do it all in my head. 13, oh, that equals 43 plus 43. And there's my simplified expression. I am all done. Okay, so this simplified expression represents how much a company will pay to hire both Jill and Kelly, both of the consultants, to help them out. Okay, so now we're all done. Let's look at one more example. Mark is selling tickets for a concert. So again, I'm going to relax, read the problem, then we're going to go back and we're going to circle and underline. So Mark is selling tickets for a concert. Adult tickets cost $16 and children's tickets cost $12.20. He gets to keep 25% of the money he collects from ticket sales. Write an expression, so here's my question I need to focus on. Write an expression, or my directions, to represent how much Mark gets to keep. So we want to know how much he gets to keep. So there is one part, one piece of the puzzle. I, there's, I pretty much understand all the words here, so I don't need to circle anything I don't understand. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and underline the important information. Adult tickets cost $16.60. Children's tickets cost $12.20. Okay, he also gets to keep 25% of the money. Okay, and that's that's everything I need to know. That's all the information I need to know. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky, but I think we'll be able to figure this one out. So first thing let's think about is adult tickets. Okay, adult tickets cost $16.60. So right now I know right away I have $16 and 60 cents. 
okay? And that's for every adult ticket. So I need to decide what variable represents adult tickets. And let's just use A, okay? Because we're probably gonna sell a different amount of tickets to adults than we do children. So we wanna use different variables, okay? So $16.60 for every adult that buys a ticket. And I also know I'm gonna add that to $12.20 for every child that represents a ticket. So we'll just use C for that, for children's tickets. Okay, so for every ch 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 child ticket, will cost twelve dollars and twenty cents. So I have, uh, I have one piece of the puzzle here. Now I got to figure out what I need to do with this twenty-five percent of the with this twenty-five percent right here. Mark gets to keep twenty-five percent of his money. Okay, so we need to figure out what twenty-five percent is of the total. Okay. This is this whole piece right here represents the total amount of money that will be made for all the tickets sold. Okay, he'll make $16.60 for every adult ticket, $12.20 for every child ticket. So this represents the total. So if I want to know what 25% of the total is, I'm going to need to multiply by 0.25, the whole entire piece. So that's why I put it in parentheses. If we remember from before, it's from unit two, 25%, that's the same thing as 25 hundredths, okay? And if I want to find, say, 25% of 100, I'm just going to take 100 and multiply it by 25% as a decimal. Multiply it by 0.25, okay? And that's it, okay? So, and, that, and when I do that, I'm going to get 25. So 25 is 25% of 100. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. I am multiplying how much money, the total amount of money that he makes, by 25% to figure out how much money Mark gets to keep because he gets to keep 25%. Now we have to explain what the variables mean. A represents adult tickets. I'm going to abbreviate here. And then C represents number of child tickets. Okay, so now my variables have a meaning to them. They're not just letters sitting in this expression right here. Okay, and to simplify, I do want you guys to make sure we use the distributive property because we can't simplify anything in these parentheses. We have two different variables. These are not like terms. 16.60a and $12.20 times c, these are not like terms because they have different variables. Okay, so because we can't simplify, we have to use the distributive property, multiply 0.25, by 1660a, and then multiply 0.25 by 12.20c, and that's gonna give us our simplified expression, which I want you guys to work out on your own in your notes, okay? And that's gonna be the last example that we have here today. Good luck on your homework. Also, just so you guys know, here's your number clue for this second lesson. The number is less than 50. Okay, guys, have a great day.